Are you looking to summit Mount San Jacinto via the Marion Mountain Trail, but you've heard it's a difficult route? In this video, we'll show you how Kat and I took on this tough challenge and beat it. Here we go! We headed east up I-10 and took the exit for the 243 South, up to Forest Route 4SO2 just before Idlewild. Parking is available at Marion Campground. Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Kat, and we're your Wilderness Wanderers. Today we're going up the Marion Mountain Trail to San Jacinto Peak for a couple days. So day one is to Little Round Valley Camp. It's a beautiful morning. This trail is rated hard. All trails definitely says you have to have a good amount of experience to go up this trail. Kevin has gone on ahead, which honestly about a year ago would have completely terrified me. Um, you know, wilderness. And if anybody has been watching our videos, bears. But uh, now I'm really trying to embrace solo hiking a little bit. We have come about three quarters of a mile according to Relive. There's a link for that app in the description. This is a brutal trail. <laughs> yeah? It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, but it's steep. Good God, it's steep. Already we're starting to get some good views and I'll let you take a look. A lot of people have cut the switches on this trail so the trail seems like it's diverging uh, and splitting an awful lot. We can definitely see how you could get lost on this and somehow end up off the trail and bushwhacking so just be very cognizant of that if you're coming up here. Think about where the trail is probably most likely to go. It's not going to go directly up so hope that helps. Perfect example of what I was just talking about guys. This is the trail. Switch. And that's Kevin telling you that it's a switch. It goes up here via this bend that I am on. Now check this out. I've just come up from there and directly opposite me is a trail. This is not part of the trail. It is not a uh, sanctioned trail. It is what's called a trace trail that people have made to cut the switch. One and a half miles in, and we have reached the wilderness boundary. This is a beautiful trail. It's very quiet. Only ran into a couple of people. No trail runners. It's, uh, <laughs> we love you, trail runners. <laughs> maybe a little steep for them. So, or else they start off earlier. We're not uh, starting at O Dark Thirty this time. So that's good. It's yeah. Fun, fun trail. Beautiful day. There is nothing like a trail to prove you wrong. You remember what I said like two minutes ago that if a switchback is going directly up a mountain, you're not on the right trail? Oh my Lord, on Marion Trail, there are sections where you go directly up the mountain. One of the first magnificent rewards for our uphill climb. <laughs> that trail's basic. That trail is not basic. That trail is hideous. In a very, very awesome way. Let me uh, pan this way. I'll show you these rocks. They're pretty cool. Oh, might be a bit close. Let's see if I can. Oh, look at that. Oh, we just left the trail. And we're lost. For, like, we're not lost. We left the trail for about two seconds. You can see it's right there. Okay, Kev, you're the geography whiz. What is in that direction? The furthest mountains you can see, that's the San Gabriel's over there. Below that is Los Angeles.
Marion Peak and Jean Peak were named in 1897 by USGS topographer Edmund Taylor Perkins Jr. Perkins named Jean Peak for his sweetheart and future bride, Jean Waters, whom he married in 1903. He named Marion Mountain after Marion Kelly, his girlfriend, a local teacher. According to a local legend, Perkins spent the summer of 1897 deciding which woman to marry while he conducted a survey of the San Jacinto Peak area. Just before reaching the first intersection with the Marion Trail and the PCT, we came upon this beautiful meadow. It was the end of summer and I suspect that this was full of wildflowers in springtime. Obviously back that way is Marion Trail and we are going to go this way, I believe. It appears that we are now at Deer Springs. Oh, very nice, which is to the left apparently. And uh, we have now joined the Pacific Crest Trail. This is the junction here. Uh, the other junction that we came to was really just the section to show you to go down Marion. But that also, to our right up there, took you to Deer Springs, which then takes you to Strawberry Trail and Suicide Rock and the highway. And then there is a, what I would say is a trace trail going down there, which is Seven Pines Trail. But what we're doing is the middle one. We are going to Little Round Valley and then up to San Jacinto Peak. If you're enjoying this video, go ahead and hit that like button. We've stopped here at Deer Springs. We've uh, got ourselves some water, had a rest, much needed rest. And uh, check out these springs. It's really beautiful up here. It smells beautiful too. It's pretty much enough smell of vision. Check it out. Beautiful and green. I think the smell is lilies maybe, I think. I don't know. I really don't know what the smell is, but it's gorgeous. Kevin is using the gravity bag again to fill up the bottles. Say hi. Hello, everybody. Deep. <laughs> Finally made it on our switchbacks to a magnificent vista. Many times on these trails, we come across downed trees that we must navigate. As you can see from this video, other than clambering over a massive trunk, the only other option was to go around it and it was seriously steep, especially carrying a heavy pack. This trail goes on forever. <laughs> or at least it feels like it goes on forever. As you can see, it's pretty much a staircase. Whoa! So, very... Uh, can get quite treacherous because you're... You're not on solid ground, but right now, I'm gonna go up there. Please forgive my heavy breathing. It is uh, dang steep up here. Oh, look at that, and it goes all the way down there, see, look. Oh yeah, real pretty. Kevin's playing in the water. <laughs> We began our hike this morning at 9.30 and we stopped regularly to rest and for lunch. We've just arrived here at Little Round Valley and it's 4.30 p.m. Thankfully, there is plenty of water here and unlike some other wilderness camps, this one has about five or six named areas. We're now going to make our way to Thunder View, our home for the next two nights. All right, we've arrived at the camp, Thunder View. This is where we're gonna set up and we'll uh... Put that video in here in a minute, but check it out, guys. This is called Thunder View for a reason. Look at this. You see the whole valley. There's Kev. And we're gonna go over here later and see what kind of views we can see, but we got a nice big view of the night sky. Kevin's taking a break. He's like, I'm done. We'll set the tripod up. We'll do time lapse and show you how we set up camp.
I am in my trusty big Agnes Tiger Wall. I have my REI mummy bag, my Snow to Summit pillow, and my Nemo inflatable bed. And then we come around here and Kevin has his Flash Air REI one man single pole tent. He has a Nemo side sleeper mummy bag and then a couple of uh, pillows. We just went exploring and this is absolutely a brilliant place to camp. A mistake a couple of groups we've seen making as we came up is these sites at this camp are signposted but then there is a trail to take you to a section off the trail which is where all the camps are so the groups that we've just passed are parked right on the trail and we are a couple hundred feet away from the trail so it's much nicer look at all this quartz that people have found and stacked up here it's kind of cool you know where there's quartz there's also cold it is Beautiful up here. Is it worth the big ass hike to get up here? Kinda is. See, this is the trail that takes you to the actual camp. It's not on the main trail. <laughs> right at the end of our trail is the water source. Oh, look at it, look at it around here. As you can see, I am filling up our gravity bag. It is always safest to use fast flowing water. This bag holds a gallon of water and can be hooked onto any tree branch or even used with your poles. A jet boil and as you can see we have brought our bear box again it is it's a bit of a monster for kevin to have to carry but up here you definitely need okay. it it's dinner time and we are trying a new dinner from peak refuel link in the description below this is a new product for us Chicken. while we wait for dinner look at the sun setting over these mountains and the verdict on the food was two thumbs up. We loved it. We hope you enjoyed part one of our three-day adventure in the San Jacinto wilderness. In part two, we'll take a day hike to the summit of Mount San Jacinto at 10,834 feet, and then our challenging journey down. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell. From Cat and Kev, your wilderness wanderers, we'll see you on the trails.